I give a hand clap to the champion of heaven, but on earth as well. He is the champion, hallelujah. He is the champion. You're happy to be at the house of the Lord. Amen. What a privilege, what an honor. Sometimes you can just be overwhelmed, not with problems, but by the presence of God. He's a gentleman. He's a loving God, but man, sometimes he just can overwhelm us. He can overwhelm us. God is so good entering a new year as a church running. We're entering a new year as a church running. We're not running backwards, we're running forward. This theme that God put in place in our hearts comes from the Lord. We're going to speak today about devoted to His call. We open the Bible to Acts chapter 2. I'm going to read some verses there. As the Lord gives us strength, I want you to be very attentive as their airwaves of the Holy Spirit are accessible and open to speak to your life and speak to my life. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37 to 42, we'll just read those for a second. Speak about the verses prior to this encounter. And the people heard this, and they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Peter had the answer, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promise is for you and your children and all of those that are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them. Interesting how it doesn't say with many other words, he blessed them or promised them. It says he warned them. He pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. In verse 42, we continue saying they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. Verse 39 mentions the word devoted. Devoted, listen carefully, write it down if you like. It's defined by many synonyms. Devoted means loyal, committed, very loving, faithful, dedicated to a person, an activity, or a cause that is devoted. But before we get into these scriptures that we just read, we need to go through a little background to understand what exactly is happening in this occurrence. Because the apostle Peter, in chapter 1, we see that there were together him and the disciples and a group of others waiting. They were waiting and they were actually excited and in anticipation because what had been happening for approximately 40 days was that a man who had been crucified on a cross and murdered publicly had resurrected and people were seeing him. No less than 10 times scriptures gives accounts of Jesus appearing to people. In Mark 16, he appeared to Mary Magdalene. 
In Matthew 28, he gives more details because he appeared to her and the other women that were by the grave site. Luke 24 says he appeared to two that were on their way to Emmaus, probably just to find work. Luke 24 also teaches that he appeared to Peter and to ten of the living apostles. John 20 again says that he appeared to the apostles minus Thomas who was not at the scene. And later in that chapter, Jesus literally comes back and shows himself to Thomas as well. Matthew 28, he appears to seven of the apostles that went back to work and went to the Sea of Galilee to fish. First Corinthians, Paul teaches by revelation of God that he appeared exclusively to James. That must have been nice. And then to about 500 people. You see, this wasn't just a flight by night appearance where you're like, was that Jesus? Was that Jesus? It wasn't a glimpse. It wasn't a second appearance. He ate with them. He spoke to them. He let them touch him. He taught them. He prayed with them. Do you imagine now the anticipation of a resurrected Jesus spending time with these men and women? Hallelujah. Excited about, is he coming back one more time? When is the next day he's going to show up? But in Acts chapter 1, he certainly showed up again. He speaks to them, gives them final instructions, and the Bible says that he ascended as of an elevator and went up to heaven. Now I need to take you back to the beginning of his ministry. Because when this same Jesus, who is now ascending and being elevated to heaven, when he started his ministry and was baptized in water, God the Father speaks audibly, where everyone that was there heard the voice of the Father that says, this is my son, to listen to him. But the Bible says that something descended. Because he was initiating his public ministry, and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus. Now Jesus is ascending, but he's not an Indian giver, and he's not selfish. When he went ascending, he said, the Holy Spirit is staying with you. So it descended, stood in Jesus, signs, miracles, wonders, the Son of God doing his loving ministry. But when he goes up, he says, I'm done, but I'm leaving another counselor. He could be everywhere at the same time. Here are these people now. Somehow became devoted. Somehow they became committed and completed. They were together in the same place. We see here unity, loyalty, faithfulness, the commitment. Somehow, folks, they were no longer worried that when they were in the top 10 most wanted list. Somehow, some 40, 50 days later, when they went into hiding, now they're publicly displaying themselves, saying, I serve a God that told me to wait, so I am waiting. Somehow, particularly these 11 men forgot about the danger, forgot how much they had messed up, they forgot how much doubt they had, they forgot about their weaknesses and their trials, they forgot about the, what they were going through to obey and be devoted to the God that they saw lift himself to heaven. Maybe, just maybe, I want to give you some insight of what devotion can do. Because maybe in their lives, this decision to stay devoted and actually obey the instructions burned some pride away. 
Maybe it was their devotion that took away all fear. Maybe it was the, the, their devotion, hallelujah, that took away those things, those doubts, and those situations that had held them back because they became loyal and committed to something that they had been taught, something that they had followed for three years. We sing he's the king of kings, but we read his subjects. We say that he is Lord of my life, though we obey all his commandments. We say that we belong to him, are we devoted? See, these are the followers of Jesus. But pastor, they were devoted previously. That were following him. Were following him. But always had limitations in their heart. They were following him. They sacrificed a lot. There was always something that held them back just a little. We see it when Jesus is arrested and they all scattered. None to be seen at his crucifixion other than John because he's trying to support his earthly mother Mary. But here is Jesus still not giving up on his folks because they belong to him. They are part of who he is. That's why we could never give up on our brethren. We can never give up on our family members that are down and out and all messed up because they are who we are. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Jesus did not give up no matter how messed up. How messed up. Hallelujah. These were the followers of Jesus. Many of these people, let's put the 11 to the side, many who followed him, followed him to criticize him. He healed they criticized him because it was on the Sabbath. He rebuked demons. They criticized him saying he's of the devil. He blessed people and they criticized him with who he would hang out with. I want you to think now of an apostle, the pastor, that's always hanging out with ex-hookers, ex-drug addicts, and ex-thieves. That was Jesus' though. That was his posse. That was the people that followed him. But something changed. Somehow they didn't care anymore. 120 brave people. 120 people willing to devote themselves. 40 days of him appearing at least 10 times. 40 days of them in prayer and in fasting. 40 days of them deciding I'm going to do it completely his way not my way oh what we don't understand and what we're going to teach you for the next few weeks is that devotion is not just sacrificial devotion is a blessing oh it is a blessing because those that are devoted can recompense you see, when we are devoted in this new year, we're going to see great things happen. We are praying for 31 days, not just to pray, is to see great things happen. We're going to see, we're going to hear, we're going to feel. Because in Acts 2, there was a sudden the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, crazy, I've said this before, it was a holiday, also known as the day of first fruits. Not only was it a holiday, I'll take it a little deeper, it was a day of giving. It was a special day where everybody took off to give a special offering to the Lord. On the day of Pentecost came, chapter 2, they were all together in one place and suddenly a sound 
like blowing wind. A sound like blowing wind came from heaven and filled the entire house that they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. They heard, they felt, they saw. Devoted people hear, see, and feel. This wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. When we hear not what we want to hear, but when we hear really what God has to say. Because he gave instructions before in chapter 1 to wait in Jerusalem. They were hearing the instructions. This time they obeyed the instructions to a team. See, when we hear what God says, it is not time to question, for God knows all things. It is not the time to judge, for he is the judge. It is not time to doubt, because by faith all things are possible. The voted people hear what he wants us to hear, and we believe it. Hallelujah. They heard something that was like a violent wind. This time it wasn't a simmer, it was obvious, it was strong, it was violent. But they says, the scripture says that we're indoors on the second floor. That we're indoors. In those days, windows weren't too large because there was no glass, which means windows were pretty small. They did that because they didn't want to freeze at night and they didn't want insects in the summer, so the windows were smaller, usually rectangular. But the wind came violently. It came violently to that second floor upper room. They heard it too. They could feel it and they heard it. Because I want you to know that a word from God sometimes can be violent and strong. A word from God sometimes may scare us and say, my God, what I need to do for him. A word from God at times may be in a way we do not expect. That they expect wind. A word from God sometimes shakes us out of our comfort zone. A word of God fills us all the way. We have all heard from God. You have heard from God. You have heard from God because you are here today. His Spirit touched your spirit and assigned you to this place to hear this word today. You are hearing from God. Amen. Word from God may scare you, may worry you, may challenge you, may shake you, but his love is everlasting. He has your back. God will never say anything to hurt you. God will never say anything to destroy you. But God may say something to challenge you. To challenge you. And when we say, but is that I can? He's saying, yes, you can. And when you're saying, I cannot change, he's saying, sure, you can. And when you say, I'll always be the same person, he's saying, I see a different you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They heard the violent wind, especially in times of divine assignments. Listen carefully, guys. Listen carefully. Especially in times of divine assignments, hearing simply is not enough. Number two, they felt. How did they know my question now is I study scripture? That what they heard filled the whole house if it didn't feel it. Now here we must be careful and here is when integrity comes in and here it was where spiritual maturity is in full effect. 
Because we're not talking about an emotional stupor, like I said. We're not talking about a feeling. Because many people declare, I feel from God. And what they feel is in the flesh. And many say, I am led to leave. I am led to change. I am led to tell you this. I am led to tell you that. But it is not God. And we're just using words. But when we feel an authentic move of God, it changes things. Hallelujah. Because our feelings must be connected to our devotion to God. Amen. Amen. We will not falter in our feelings if we are really, genuinely devoted to God. Praise God. God sends a feeling, it's a confirmation. God sends a feeling, it's accompanied with scripture. God sends a feeling is united what we've already heard and what we already see in scripture and studied it. When God sends a feeling, it is connected with our spiritual eyes, not our carnal being. Amen. What they saw was accompanied with what they had been promised. They heard first. Didn't Jesus tell them, I'm going to send you another comforter that will comfort you in spirit and in truth? They heard it. Now they're seeing it. Now they're feeling it. This is what was taught. What had been prophesied. What had been promised. And it is promised to you. And it is still promised to me. It still exists. And the Holy Spirit still is in effect here on earth. Hallelujah. Feeling comes with maturity. If we are devoted, we put in God's hands decisions that change our life. When we are devoted, since it means committed, dedicated, faithful, and loyal, we know how to speak to God and wait for confirmation. All steps of spiritual maturity. They heard, they felt, they saw. This was nothing but a call to revival. Because now they saw. Let me tell you about revival. Because genuine revival, we're going to see things that make no sense going to see things that we may not understand. We're going to expect the unexpected and not be able to explain the unexplainable because he is Lord and he is King. These 120 people found themselves in this situation and I call it a crossroad moment. It was critical and life changing but they could have reacted differently. They could have left and said, this ain't for me. This may be a little too emotional. This may be a little too out of order. This may be a little different from what I had been taught. They didn't do it like that in the synagogue in Jerusalem. They didn't do it that in the small church in Samaria. They didn't do it, do it like that in the street service with John the Baptist. This is a little different. You know, I'm not going to walk away and say, I'm out of here. This is weird. Crossroad moment. Every single Christian will find themselves in various times in their life in a crossroad moment. What do I do and where do I go? And do I keep on trucking in this world called serving the Lord, being devoted? We all have these life changing moments. They could have rejected what they saw and what they heard, they could have rejected because it made no sense. Running away from the unfamiliar. So sad that even today in the 21st century, people run away from the unfamiliar. Man, they just sent me an article this week. I didn't even know the name. I didn't even know it had a name. Something called a fire tunnel. Does anyone know what a fire tunnel is? She reads, I guess, because I don't know. She reads a lot. I just did it. I didn't know it had a title. So fire tunnel. So when they get men and women of God, 
in line, opposite, it could be three, six, seven, twenty, whatever, and people go through them and lay hands on them. That's all it is. Like I said, I didn't know. I've seen it before. I've participated in that before. I didn't know I had a title, fire tunnel. So a man that gets a article, just bashing the new wave of carnality in the church, these fire tunnels, criticizing the unfamiliar. How do you know it's not of God? How do you know something different is not of God? How are you so sure? Because you've read a lot of books and it doesn't confirm to your personal theology? How sad. Many who talk have no idea what they're talking about. They judge and are not qualified to judge. But you know, people that hear from God, people that are aligned with God, people that are devoted for God, are not people that are perfect to God. Hallelujah. Peter was in hiding. Peter was cursing up a storm as Jesus was being crucified. He was trying to mingle and be part of a crowd. He got him a chilly night and he's in the fire trying to hide himself. Maybe he changed his hat. Maybe he changed his clothing. That's one of them. It's like, no, nah, you're crazy. Oh my God. You dress like them. Maybe they had uniforms and all but they said you dress like you. You talk like them. You act like them. And so he could be part of the crowd. The Bible says he cursed. Used foul language so he could blend in and say, I'm not part of those, whatever, whatever, whatever. But here is Jesus showing up to that same imperfect Peter. Saying, I'm here. I said I was going to come back. I'm here. I said I was going to return. I'm here. But there's things I still need to teach and put in your life. Devotion is not about perfection. <coughs> Devotion is a mindset and a decision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be a good person. I am a good person. I don't steal. I don't rob. Pay my taxes. Church. I'm a good person. 2019, God is looking for devotion. You see, because the disciples and his followers have come to a crossroad where being in awe is no longer enough. Seeing the miracles were no longer enough. Hearing the great preachings that you and I do daily or weekly on YouTube, there's going to be a day where it simply is not enough. See, I came today with a mandate that 2019 is the year of devotion in this house. We are devoted to his call because we want to hear, we want to feel, and we want to see the glory of God. I see a church that's in awe of Jesus. I see a church that's hearing from God. I see a church that feels his presence. I want a church that does it as well. Because that's step number four. You see, because we tend to forget. You know, I've been in church. People say, I've been in church five years and God's never really used me. I've been in church for three years. God really knew me. I've been to church for 20 years and God really is never like, like giving me what I should do in the kingdom. These 11 men, 12, one was out of order and wound up hanging himself. We're ministering with Jesus for three years. That's 36 months, 156 weeks, 195 days, day and night, 24-7. Now that's been trained there. I calculated this, Eugene knows. 
This is equivalent. If we come to church once a week, that is equivalent to 15 years. 15 years of training it'll take to be equivalent to the training of the disciples by God. But now as we read these verses that we shared with you, this same imperfect Peter that is now full of the power of the Holy Ghost was able to see, feel, and hear, but now he's doing it. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. The word is effective. The word touches the soul. The word changes the heart. And for the first time, these believing people are called brothers. This was prophetic right there because they're being called brothers by people that have not yet come to the knowledge of grace. They're about to. Brothers, they call the disciples, what shall we do? What are we going to do with this word that you're giving us? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? He read the answer, we've been be baptized. And as we read, around 3,000 accepted the call. Now, how did this new believing people, how did they stay and become devoted as the 120? Loyal, faithful, committed, dedicated. How? Lord, how? That is the secret to a blessed life. To be loyal to God, to be faithful to God, to be committed and dedicated. You will not only see and feel occasionally, or hear a great word, or hear a prophetic call, you will do when we are devoted to his call. Peter was no longer just hearing, he was now doing. His first message is fulfilling prophecy. When Jesus told him, Peter, you guys know Peter was nothing but a nickname, his real name was Simon. Peter means rock, his nickname was the rock. And he said, Peter, on this rock I shall build my church. Peter must live. But when it comes time for fulfillment, my brethren, when it comes the time of God, Hallelujah. nothing stops a move from God. Amen. Nothing stops a move from God. Amen. Because here is Peter. And the four Gospels are full with prophetic annotations of Peter's calling. Every listing of every listing, every single one in the four Gospels of the disciples heads with Peter being the first one. Every single listing. And here he comes. He takes the bull by the horns and starts speaking. And he says, listen, we're not drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning. People thought they were drunk because they were inundated with the power of the Holy Ghost. And he preached to them the sermon that we see, hallelujah, in Acts chapter 2. And we see these people that are cut to the heart and say, my God, these are words of power and of anointing from this man who was nothing but a fisherman, but now he's a minister of the gospel. He is not just saying, he is just not watching, he's just not hearing. Now he is doing the will of God. And they came to him and they became devoted. They became devoted because they saw 120 that had first been devoted. And devotion is not to my calling. It is not devotion to my ministry. I have told God I don't preach another sermon. I will follow you. I won't preach to another sheep, pass for another sheep. I will follow you. Because it's about devotion to him, not to a talent or a gifting or a calling. What would happen if 
you lose that gift, will you follow him? Watch the TV show about a month ago, one of these uh, hospital shows, I believe, ER shows. There was a young woman, and this is just a show, a young woman who came in with infection in her hands, her hands were swollen. And she was a concert violinist. To make a long story short, in the show, they did all the proper testing and the infection had gotten to her bones. Her hands, I believe, had gangrene and they were all deformed and swollen and purple and black and they put her anesthesia and they needed to know and they needed to make a decision but she wouldn't wake up and they knew that she was a concert violinist and they wound up cutting her hand off. And in a show, I'm like, this poor kid, it's her passion. It's her gift, it's her calling, it's her livelihood. My God, what a tragedy, what a disaster. And this was a TV show. But right there, the Holy Spirit told me during the commercial, because he's a gentleman, he waited for the commercial and told me, hey, hey. He finally said, man, he's really into this. Let me chill out. I want to He told me, today, what would happen if you lost it all? And I told the Lord, just don't touch my wife and my children. I'm willing to lose it all. Take me tonight, Lord. I know where I'll be. Take me tomorrow. Take me in 2020. Take me in 2050. I know where I'll be. Even through TV, God can minister to your word when you're devoted. Even then, even then, we cannot be devoted to a responsibility, a ministry, a calling that comes under our devotion to the God who called us to eternity. These people followed. But I want you to see the heart of these leaders. I want you to understand because there are times, quite frankly, where these 11 men had no idea what to do. There are times as a parent, there's a time as a wife, there's a time as a father, there's a time as a leader in the church, there's a time as a pastor, believe me, that we have no idea what we're going to do. But when we are devoted, Oh, when we are devoted to his call, not my call, not a call, to his calling to serve him and put him first. Oh, does he make a way? Oh, does he make a way? Why don't you stand up with me? Devoted. Loyal, committed, dedicated, highly loving. My oh my, what devotion can do. I don't know about you, but I've been doing this for a long time. I grew up in the Lord. My dad's back there would take me to church as a little boy, me and my mom, my sister. Five days a week, Sundays twice. But devotion is just not church attendance. Devotion is a lifestyle. When we have the lifestyle, church attendance becomes easy. Becomes something we're willing and excited to do. But I don't know about you. But I've heard a lot. I've seen a lot. I've felt a lot. The goosebumps falling on the ground. The dreams. The prophetic words. The promises from God. 
reading the scripture at home and simply saying, my God, is that for me? That's the best one of all, as far as I'm concerned. When you say, my God, I have to read this again. This is for me. But I don't know about you. But I want to get into the realm of these 120 and start doing. I want to start doing not church, but the will of the Father. I want to start doing because we have seen, we have felt. Let's do. And we have heard, let's do in 2019. It will be a struggle, listen carefully. It will be a struggle like it's been in the past if we try to do it at all strength. It will be a trouble if we try to do it without devotion. But like these men and women, when we are devoted, man, it's going to be a push, it's going to be a rocket launch into his destiny and his purpose. Devoted to his call. Peter is an individual, he's 120 as an individual. We'll continue speaking about this as God gives us strength. Hallelujah. We're going to sing to the Lord. That is our custom in this house. If there happens to be someone that needs Jesus, rededicate their life to Jesus. If there's someone in this house that needs prayer, there are devoted people that want to pray with you and desire to pray with you and for you. The altar is open, the altar of the Lord, because coming here is the greatest step of faith. To say, God, I'm coming towards you this time to receive what you may have for me. The altar is open as we sing to the Lord. Hallelujah.